Welcome. Ready to do some thinking with me? Probably need your help. So if you put some things in the comments, that would be a blessing to me. We're going to talk about a word today that many of us love to hear. It's abundance. That's one word we really like. Abundance. And I want to share it with you through the perspective of two passages of Scripture. Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think, according to the power at work within us. Now listen to John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So it's clear people run to the thought, see, Jesus wants us to have everything we want. He wants us to have life and he wants us to have it abundantly. Let's look at Ephesians 3, 20 for a minute. Now to him who's able to do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think, according to the power at work within us. What is the power at work within us? It's the Holy Spirit. Now, he makes it plain that God can work abundantly beyond our wildest dreams and imagination, but he chooses to work according to the power at work within us. Now, he's not talking about your ability to, be, to perform your power. He's talking about the power that works within us, which is the Holy Spirit. And then he says, well, I came that you may have life more abundantly. What does it mean to have life more abundantly? It's more to abundance than just things. It's more to abundance than just accumulation. But let's even look at that. Where is our accountability when it comes to God getting a return on his investment? We love to sing praises and talk about what God would do for us. But what about our accountability in terms of what we do with our abundance? Or do we even recognize the abundance that's around us? Do we actually recognize all of the wonderful, marvelous things that God is doing in us and through us? Well, what happens when God asks for some of your time in your abundance of good health? When God wants you to come out and assemble with his people at the church house, what happens to our accountability when God wants that return on his investment? When God asks for a charitable offering when you come into a financial windfall? What happens to our accountability? What happens then to this marvelous phenomenon that we celebrate as abundance? When God asks for our prayer time, when he's allowed us peaceful and a profitable day, what do we do with our abundance then? Isn't it amazing how much we hoard our abundance, and we often pray for abundance. We often, um, you know, ask God to sow into us. But we're very bad at handling this thing called abundance. We're hoarders. We just want God to keep giving and giving and giving and blessing and sowing into us. But listen to what he says. He says, to whom much is given, much is required. It's the same as saying much is demanded. God wants a return on his investment. He wants a return on his investment towards your health. He wants a return in his investment towards your peace. He wants a return in his investment toward your finances. We pray for abundance and then we circumvent the very effort of God sowing into us by being hoarders of what we get instead of giving. Not only does God want some of his investment back, 
in terms of a return, he wants you to sow into others. So my question to you is this, are you just an asker? You just someone who asks for abundance? But are you, or are you someone that's trying to understand what it means to be abundantly blessed? I think we need to take another look at this thing and realize that there's an accountability in God sowing into us. He wants a return on his investment. At the very least, think about it.